Hi, how you doing? Justin here. In this lesson today we're going to be talking about the CAGE system, which is a really, really great method for categorizing everything that you learn on the guitar, be it chords, scales, arpeggios, all of that sort of stuff, fits into one of these caged shapes. And there's actually only five major chord shapes on the guitar. And these are C, A, G, E, and D, which we're here, spells caged, which is why it's called the caged system. Now, I'm not going to take you through too much of the theory behind what's going on here. If you want to get into the theory, then you're going to have to buy my ebook, which is available on justinguitar.com, and it's called Practical Music Theory. So, and it, it really explains all of the stuff up to the cage system, and the cage system takes up the last part of that book. So, if you want to get into the theory side of things, then you might want to check that out. What I'm going to show you is the, the practical application, like how you play them and how it works, but I'm also going to show you how to work it out for yourself. Now, the first thing you're going to need to do if you're going to work it out for yourself is pop onto the website, justinguitar.com, and then go to the blank paper uh, page area. And on it, there's a page called uh, the Chord Finding Method, a type of paper which has got a big neck diagram on it. So the first thing you probably want to do, either right now or after you finish watching this video, is um, go and down that, that PDF file and print it out, and you've got a nice little neck diagram. The next thing you're going to want to do is you need to know the notes all over the fingerboard. Now, if you don't know that already, it's something that I'd advise that you learn because it's really useful. Um, but if you want a quick reference guide in the basics section, I think it's lesson TB007, um, there's a little neck diagram there with all of the notes on the guitar neck for you. So that'll help you uh, actually be able to work it out. And what I'm going to get you to do is figure out where all of the F chords are on the page, where all of the notes are. And so eventually we're going to be able to play like F chord down here chord up a little bit further, if I can actually play it, and a bit further, and a bit further, and a bit further. And they're all F chord, and it's a really useful thing to be able to play all your chords and all your scales and all that in five positions. So, let's get started. So you've got your paper in front of you, and you've got that uh, neck diagram with all of the, uh, the uh, note names written on it. First thing we're going to do, because we're dealing with an F chord, the notes in an F chord are the notes F, A, and C. So what you're going to do now is you're going to write, wherever there's an F on the guitar neck, you're going to write an F. And then you do that with A and C as well. So the finished product that you should have is a guitar neck with all of the Fs, As and Cs written down. And write it actually as an F, an A and a C. Don't worry about just, don't put just a dot there because we'll need those Fs, As and Cs later on. So that's first stage. Now, the thing that I want you to start to recognize after you've done that, so hopefully you've paused now and, and gone and done that and, and you're back, um, we're going to look at how those note groupings fit together to form these different chord shapes. Now, the first one that we're going to look at is the one, it's kind of based around this, the first fret here, and I think what I'm going to do is go to a little close-up now so you can see exactly where I'm putting my fingers. And hopefully that some of you know that this is being an F chord, but this is also referred to as an E shape chord. Now the reason this is called an E-shaped chord is because if we replaced our bar, which is our first finger there, with a capo, which I've conveniently got just here, look, it's an E-shape, right? It looks like a regular E chord, yeah? But because we're not using a capo for now, that becomes an F chord. And if you look at the notes that you're playing, you're playing F, C, F, A, C, and F. And that's it. It's as simple as that. This is called an E shape bar chord because it's using what would be an E chord if we were using a capo there instead of our first finger. So make sure you can find all of those notes on that little neck diagram that you've seen. Now if you look further up the neck now, you're going to look for the next kind of group of notes and you'll probably find there's an, there's an A here, A, C, F, C, F, and an A. This is, a, this is the fifth fret here where my fingers are now. Now this forms this chord shape, which is a little bit uncomfortable to play, and to be honest, you don't tend to play this chord shape like this a whole lot. You tend to play this, which is just the middle four strings of the grip. You might play just the top little bit. You might play it like that, it's quite nice. It's quite a nice shape to play, it's not that difficult, but it's a little bit stretchy. Now, this one is a D shape bar chord, because if we put the capo down here on the third fret where I put my bar, it would be the same as a D chord, right? It's pretty simple, this cage thing, really. So we had E shape first, and we've got D shape next. There's your little D shape chord, but we tend to play it 
if we're looking at the cage system anyway, as being like this, which is, again, if we look at these notes here, C, F, C, F, A. Now, of course, there is another note down here, this A, which we're just going to have to leave off because you can't, there's not enough fingers. I suppose if you want to get really clever and hit the note with your other hand, then you could. Um, sometimes you might play this, this chord, which is a lovely chord, which is an F chord with an A bass, or a first inversion F, you could refer to that as. So, that's the second one we're looking at, D-shaped bar chord. Now, if we look at the next group of notes, so just have a look and see if you can find it yourself first before you see me do it, but if you, once you've done that, you'll find here. This is a C-shape bar chord, right? So again, I'm gonna replace my first finger there with a capo, and you'll see it's an F chord. F, A, C, F, A. But it's really, it's a, yeah. You can do it just with a, your, your regular shape. Now you could, you'll notice here as well, there's an A there, so you could play here, F chord with an A bass. And there's also a C note up here. But then you run out of fingers to play those other notes. So in theory, you could kind of play this if you wanted to, but that's the common way of playing an F shape sorry, a C-shape F chord. Got that? Okay, so if we continue further up the neck again, it's getting a bit awkward for me here, but uh, I think I can handle this. Okay, so this would be our next group of notes. Very common bar chord shape. This is, it. most of you know, this is a uh, A-shape bar chord. Um, so what we've got here, there's an F, C, F, A, and if you can get that top note there, you've got another C as well. Most of the time when you're playing this shape, just mute the thinner string, you don't worry about playing that. You'll see that there's also the C note is included in the chord, so you could add both of those notes in here if you wanted. But generally, it's played like that. Pretty straightforward shape. And the last one, which is a real pig to play, I'll be honest, it's, it's not very comfortable, even though I've done this one a whole lot, is this. <laughs> it's a bit, this is pretty stretchy, and uh, we've got uh, up here our uh, notes up here on the 13th fret, the root notes. But again, if we grab the capo out for a second, and this time we'll capo the 10th fret, we'd have a G shape. This is a G chord. Sounds like F, it's a G shape. F, A, C, F, A, F. So I keep thinking of it as a G chord. Anyway, so that's the, but that's the last one of our shapes, and that's the G shape. So there's a brief introduction to the five shapes of the caged system. Really, really important idea to get down this one. So really, please make sure you've done that paperwork yourself. Um, there's a whole lot of more information in the basics area of my website about the caged system, like a five-page lesson. As I said, it's also that, that material is included in my Practical Music Theory ebook, um, which will hopefully make a lot more sense for you if you understand like how chords are constructed, and then you might want to figure out, I don't know, how to change all of these major shapes that I've just shown you into minor chords. It's actually not that hard if you understand what's going on. If you really want to delve into this and you really want to get your cage system sorted out properly, I've got another ebook. Sorry to be selling you so much stuff here, but I'm hoping that you've got the gist of this information here. Um, I've got a book called The Chord Construction Guide, which shows you the cage system, but then shows you how to change each one of those chords from a major chord into a minor chord, into a dominant seventh chord, into a major seven, minor seven, six, minor six. Gives you a whole heap of uh, kind of how to relate one chord and change it into another chord. Rather than trying to learn, so a big problem I find for a lot of guitar players is when they learn chords, they try and learn them each as kind of individual shapes and trying to remember all that, which is too much. Whereas what the, the correct way to do it, and the way that people who know lots of chords usually do it, is they relate one chord to another chord. They know that if I've got, oh, this is a major seventh chord and I move that seventh to a sixth, then I've got a major sixth chord, that kind of thing. It's a, it's a, a, a lot more comprehensive way of doing it. You'll understand it better and you'll be able to use all of those chords a lot easier if you understand how they're constructed. So uh, I hope that's given you a bit of an intro to the cage system. As I said, plenty more information on the website about all of this. So. Uh, Hope that makes some sense to you, and I'll see you for another guitar lesson real soon. Uh, later. Bye-bye.